Today on Lights, Camera, Akron News Edition, we talk with University of Akron students in response to the State of the Union Address. Jeannie gives us tips for surviving this winter blast. Jen shows us all the highs and lows at this year's Golden Globe Awards. All this and more on Lights, Camera, Akron News Edition. Welcome to an all-new Lights, Camera, Akron News Edition. I'm Jay Marshall. And I'm Heather Daniels. Here's today's top stories. The State Department says the U.S. Embassy in Yemen has closed to the public over security concerns amid street violence and turmoil that is rolling the impoverished Arab country. Obviously, the situation on the ground in Yemen remains yes. tense, difficult, yes. and there's a con ongoing concern about violence. Um, in response to the changing security situation in Yemen, uh, as we announced last week, we further reduced our personnel. I know this is what, what you asked me, but just it's, it's part of it. Um, and non-emergency employees and family members uh, were ordered to depart last September. So there's been a, a, a series of building up. Uh, U.S. Embassy in Sana'a remains open. Uh, only routine consular services are closed to the public. We're still providing emergency consular services to U.S. citizens in Yemen. And due to ongoing security concerns, which we indicated last week we'd continue to evaluate and make staffing and other decisions accordingly, uh, we're unable to provide routine consular services. But as I mentioned, we remain open <coughs> and, and operational. We're continuously <coughs> analyzing the security conditions and we'll remain, uh, we'll resume regular consular operations as soon as possible. What, what, what's the the decision to close the embassy came hours after a U.S. drone strike killed three al-Qaeda members in the first such operation since the resignation of Yemen's embattled president Abed Rabu Mansur Hadi and the country's cabinet. They resigned following days of political wrangling with Shahid Houthi rebels and overran the capital of Sana'a in September and have since been expanding their power grab. A judicial official says a Frenchman wanted in connection with deadly terrorist attacks in Paris has been extradited from Bulgaria to France, where he is facing charges of links to terrorism. The Frenchman was arrested January 1st on unrelated warrant while trying to cross from Bulgaria into Turkey. French police say that the 19-year-old was an associate of the Kouachi brothers, who killed 12 people in an attack January 7th against the newspaper Charlie Hebdo. He's accused of participating in organized crime group with a terrorist aim, and the links to network feeding fires to Syria. The official said he arrived in France and is expected to appear before a judge imminently. Indonesia's military has halted its recovery efforts in the crash of Air Asia Flight 8501 in the Java Sea, but workers from the National Search and Rescue Agency will continue their attempts to raise the plane's fuselage and recover the 92 bodies that are still missing. The Indonesia military says it's had four days of unsuccessful attempts to raise the fuselage and to locate more bodies. Rear Admiral Widodo apologized to the families of the victims. Macau, the Chinese territory known for casinos, registered the best economic showing among the world cities last year. That's according to a report by the Brookings Institution and J.P. Morgan Chase Raking 300 Cities Worldwide. The report says that cities in the developing world, especially China, dominated the top of the rankings. One exception was Bangkok, Thailand. It came in last, largely because of its economy has been wrecked by political strife. Macau has enjoyed tourist boom with gamblers coming to bet at more than 30 casinos, including the Venetian Macau, the world's largest. Cities in wealthy developing countries tend to lag behind, but U.S. and British cities showed improvement from 2013. Three U.S. cities, Austin and Houston, Texas, and Raleigh, North Carolina, cracked the top 50. London came in number 26. The World Health Organization says Ebola cases are continuing to fall across Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, but noted it still unable to track where about half of new cases are coming from. In two of the countries, WHO said that 145 suspects, probable and confirmed Ebola causes, were reported in the three countries as of January 18th. It said cases in Guinea and Liberia were at their lowest level since August and September. 
WHO also said only 53% of new cases in Guinea and Liberia are from known contacts of confirmed cases, meaning they still lack precise information about where the virus is spreading. No such information is available for Sierra Leone. The death rate for hospitalized patients in Africa countries is about 60%. U.S. lawyers representing a woman who claimed she was forced to have underage sex with Britain's Prince Andrew has filed papers requesting that he respond to her claims under oath. Andrew has not publicly responded to the papers filed in Florida court. Buckingham Palace officials have strongly denied Andrew had any sexual involvement with the woman who is identified only as Jane Doe No. 3 in court papers. The woman says the court papers that the denials are false. Well, winter has begun and is in full swing. It sure has. Reporter Jen Danzak is on the scene at one of Akron's favorite winter destinations. Hey, Jen. Hey, Jade and Heather. Yep, I am here for the very first day of ice skating at Lock 3, downtown Akron, and I'm standing here with the manager, Chris Griffith. Now, Chris, what do we do during this entire winter at Lock 3? Uh, this is our 11th year down here, and we do ice skating. So it's an outdoor rink, and it's a $3 to rent your skates. If you have your own skates, it's free. Uh, so it's a huge outdoor rink, so please come down and enjoy it. And new to this year, we have our Polar Putt Golf Course, which is an indoor nine-hole mini golf course. Uh, so it's three dollars as well and you get to play nine holes and then we have uh, returning is our reindeer run which is way back there behind us and it is three dollars to rent a sled for 30 minutes and you can go down as many times as you want. Okay, now what's going on with the huts behind you? I see those are there. Uh, that's our Chris Kindle market. That's back uh, again this year. We have a couple of different vendors up there. There's a German vendor that does Christmas ornaments and glass blowing. And then we have a couple other vendors from around Akron. Uh, homemade delights that make some good uh, cookies and things like that, as well as other vendors this year. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Make sure you guys come out here before February 16th, because that is the very last day of ice skating. I'll see you guys in the studio. It sure looks like it. And you were a figure skater at one point growing up, right? Yes, actually. I was skating for six years when I was little, so luckily I know what I'm doing out here. Think you could show us a spin or a jump or something? Oh my goodness, seriously? All right. <laughs> Hold on. Hope you're happy, Jade and Heather. <laughs> that was so awesome, Jan. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It was so much fun. Come out here, guys. Coming up on Lights, Camera, Akron News Edition, we hear what students have to say about the State of the Union Address. Stay tuned. <laughs> 